we in mouse action we have totally we can do all these things mouse over mouse right click drag and drop slider kind of thing and resizable boxes so mouse over is nothing but if i move a mouse for to an element like uh, i'll show an example for that so mouse over so mouse over i'm going to use a different website so we will be using this website for our project orange hr it is actually um, like a corporate website they will be using this website now they are giving it as a demo actually this website is um, they are giving it uh, for customization purpose so we can design for hr kind of websites and all they'll be designed using this template only okay so this is actually a corporate website now they are giving it for a purpose see this in this website they have given the admin as a username and the password We are going to write step by step, not using click method. We are going to use the mouse action method. But the remaining thing goes remains the same, like action, class, object creation, and uh, the perform operation method. Everything remains same. We are going to identify each and every element, and we are going to use a different method. That's it. So, see, first we have created, open the browser. And we have given the URL as uh, our login. From a login page, we are executing. Not from this page, we are going to log. From the login page, we are going to start. So we have given the URL as login, and we have maximized the window. And first, I have given the driver dot find element by dot id of that uh, username box. Admin. This one, yeah, admin box. And then I have given the value as admin send keys. And the next one text password admin one two three and I have identified the login button and I have clicked off. So now it is inside the page. Okay, so in this page. So now I what I want to do I want to identify this element. Okay, so this element I'm going to just inspect. I'm going to identify the admin. So admin this one. So I'm just going to. Either we have an ID call ID is equal to menu underscore admin underscore view view admin module. Either you can give the ID or you can copy the X path also. See, we have given the X path. So X path also it shows the ID name. Okay. So this is one thing. Understood? Yes. And uh, next thing is for user management. See if you can't directly go and click it like this. It should work, but sometimes what happens is 
if you want to perform the mouse operation you can directly yeah, it will for that what you can do is you can just keep it like this just go to this page and then you can copy export if you if you are able to type this also you can do it because they have given the id also you can either use id or you can use export we have two things as we are not able to it is very lengthy right so if you want to copy you can copy also double click and you can copy paste the mm -hmm. id or you can uh, just uh, get the export of that id and you can paste it so this is second one now third so third one is users so i am going to go to that users element so just check this is user management and again go to copy copy export and you are going to type that so now we have three elements and we have uh, stored it inside the web element and we have given a separate name so we have created an action class also now we are going to for three things we are going to use the same method move to element okay so move to element is nothing but moving from uh, moving to that particular element that is mouse over for mouse over operation we are using the method called move to element so move to element of what is the parameter here we need to mention two element so what is the two element here this is the two element so which name we have given admin so two element of admin dot build dot perform action dot move element of user management dot uh, build dot build of dot perform action dot move to element of users but for users what we need to do do we need to just say build dot perform uh no it's like we need to click, click on the below yeah. above above yeah. use yeah. yeah see this one is okay this one we are just moving the mouse this one also we are just move the mouse but here we are going to move the mouse as well as we are going to click that then only the page will display right so you if you want to perform the operation we are going to click that also so we are adding an extra method called click off then we build it and then perform it okay so here we are just saying build of perform of here instead of that we are using click off dot build of dot perform of what we are going to do is instead of writing three steps we can hmm. even write it in a single step also see action is common here move to element is also common here so what we are going to do is move to element of admin dot move to element of user management dot move to element of users dot click off dot build off dot perform off in a single line we can write the three lines we can merge it and write it as a single line also so now we clicked it so what can we do again what is the next step so what we are going to do is we are going to get the number of rows inside the table number of rows in the sense how many users are available inside this table we are going to get the details for that we are going to write this code whichever we have written in the web table web table we wrote uh, some line right to get the number of rows so so for same concept we are going to use we are going to get the name of the table first so how to get the name of the table just inspect the element and we are going to highlight the table so first we need to identify where the table starts this is actually a form so you can just go to the you can just check where the table is see this is the table see it highlights the whole table okay so you can just right click and you can copy the export so here i have given it as by dot id result table or if you have the export you can use it see i can use id result table also this is also a table id you can either use this or you can get the export of the whole table and we are going to store it inside the table variable now what we are going to do is we are going to 
list web element rows equal to user table dot find element by dot tag name of pr. So what does this mean? PR is not the row the table rows and tag mm -hmm. name is nothing but we are going to get the all the PR details using the locator called tag name. So how many rows are there? Every information will be stored inside the variable called rows. So this is your table name. Inside this table name, find all the tag names which starts with the PR. Okay, so all the information will be stored inside the rows. So rows dot, I need only the size. I don't want the type or the, I don't want the content or I don't want the value. I want only the size of the rows. So it is going to be stored in a variable called R with a data type of integer. So if I print it, it will automatically print the number of rows inside this table. Okay, so, but what will happen is it will only display the number of rows in this table. See, sometimes what happens is if the content is more, it will be displayed to the next page also. We need to navigate to the next page to get the number of rows also. That will not be counted here. So, as of now, we have only one page. But if there is a, yesterday when I was viewing it, we have two pages of data. Actually, there was around 59 values or 60 rows, but it uh, shows me only 51. Why? Because it shows only the number of rows in the particular page. Okay, because this is considered as a table. So, it will not go to the next page and check the values. Only it will display the number of rows in this table, in the page, in the particular page. So, we will execute this. it is executing it moves to the page and it selects the admin user management so it automatically navigates to the user management and it should click the users and it, it will display the number of rows see now it has only 44 rows in that table mm -hmm. it displays mm -hmm. the number of rows Okay, so this, this is ma not mandatory. We have added this step. So, only for if we want to perform this action, mouse over action means we can stop till this. We can just ask it to click and build and perform it. It will directly go and click the users and it will stay on that page. But this is extra step. It is uh, whether we need to check the number of rows means we can add this code. This code we have used it uh, from web table. We can uh, write it in the same format. How we collected the number of rows and how we can print it, the values. If I say by dot tag name of PD means what it will do? It will fetch the, the data number of data. data. Yeah. How many just one, data? Yeah. Just uh, one thing regarding that uh, uh, you move to element method. Yes, yes. Uh, in that, uh, that name, we uh, we don't have to enclose within uh, double quotes, right? Inside no, no. element. No, no. Why? Because this okay. is like a variable, right? So, uh, always the variable will not be included in double quotes. Only the string text will be in, given inside the double quotes. See, okay, okay. system.print.ln, why we are just saying R? R is a variable. Mm -hmm. Okay, like that, move to element of, we are just saying admin. So, what do the admin have? Admin have the details about that particular element, x path. Details of that particular element. Mm -hmm. So, we, it is not mandatory to, it is not necessary to put double quotes. If you say double quotes, what it will do is, it will just consider that admin as a text. 
not as a variable or object. Okay. Okay. Normally, if for not only for this method, for every method, if it is a method name, you are going to give the parameters only without double quotes. If at all, it is a label parameter. Label parameter means it will be displayed somewhere. That uh, text or heading will be displayed somewhere. So at that time, you can use double quotes. Okay, you understood? If uh, sometimes yeah. if I want to give the pop up uh, a name or title for that box, means I can use double quotes. But uh, as of now, we are not going to use that kind of properties. We are just going to fetch only the object names. So double quotes is not mandatory. Okay. You understood this? Yes. Yeah. You are telling about the TD, right? Yeah, we TD also we can use the same concept. We can just copy paste and you practice that one. You try that one. You can just change the tag name as TD and uh, you store it inside a variable and try to print the value. So this is number of rows. And if you try to do the same step, what happens? How many data we have, it will be displayed. Okay, so this will be each and everything will be considered as a data. So one, two, three, four, like that. How many data cells available? It will count and tell you the number of data. You practice that one, that block. Okay. You understood or you want me to tell it again? No. Yeah. You practice that web table, right? Same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, same thing. See this one. This is web table. We have written the same concept. Yeah, this I understood. Yeah. All the table functions we can do here only. Yes, right? yes, yes. We can That's do normal. Yeah, normal. Only. 